world headquarters of common sense. Talk radio. When women speak up for women's and girls' rights, whether it's your right to have a chance of winning a medal in a sport competing only against women, whether it's about your right to get changed or go to the toilet or or be imprisoned in a space where you don't face risk from a male sexual predator, um, then you're just called a transphobe, as, as you have been called. But the Equalities Watchdog has just backed us up. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. And you know what's ridiculous is this is the actual rule. So let me just read it for you. It's section uh, 195. It outlines that all males, including those in possession of a gender recognition certificate, can and even must be excluded from female categories in sex affected sports in competitive settings. Now, I don't know how that can be confused by anybody. And I don't know how Stonewall have managed to lambast every single governing body in this country that it's okay to throw women's sport under the bus you know biologically we are different and in sport it's incredibly obvious yeah. people can see the difference between a male and female performance and I, that's really what i, I tend to specialize in because i've been involved in international sports since i was 11 years old you and know of what you speak 12 of them yeah well we saw didn't we we saw recently with leah thomas the uh the uh well, eight, six you know six foot biological male with everything intact who identified who was a, who was a not very good swimmer who then became a very good swimmer when he started competing against women and um that caused an uproar we always knew once this started to be going public and it was national competitions people would wake up and see that this is what you and i both believe it is it's cheating it's not transphobic it's simply it's just we just think it's not fair we've seen it with cycling at the weekend although the women cyclists all stood up and went we're not going to compete on this basis and uh, we've seen it though uh, the english uh, england universities team have selected a six foot biological male as their female goalie yeah, I mean, my point is, of course, sport has to be inclusive. Yep. But there are ways inside of the male and female category that those people can be accommodated. And you mentioned Emily Bridges. Emily Bridges has been competing with the men for the last year and been very successful. And in fact, at the NC2As, we had a transgender man, so biologically female, Isaac Hennig, who actually chose to carry on compete in the women's category, even though they're identified as male. So mm -hmm. it can be done. Yeah. So that's how we include everybody. We don't have to throw women's sport... Yeah and the opportunities for, for young girls and young women to be successful in their own category of sport under the bus for inclusion. We can find better ways to be inclusive. Absolutely. And it's just about being welcoming to everybody, but also accept the difference in the same way that you wouldn't allow a heavyweight boxer to compete against, uh, you know, uh, uh, a, 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 a lightweight. Well, I, can't, I don't know the terminology in boxing. I think that's become horribly Yeah, or like clear. a bantamweight, you know, or even age groups. You know, you take school sport, you know, you yeah. wouldn't have the under 10s and allow a 15-year-old to take part. Yeah. We have categories for a reason. Yeah. Sport is exclusionary by definition. That's the whole point. We try to create level playing fields like we do with the Paralympic Games. And yeah. that's why we have male and female sport. I, I for instance, am excluded from all sport with, because I have no sporting ability or hand-eye coordination. <laughs> but that, I, but I, I'm not bothered about that. But then that sport is one thing. And I think it is very important. It's about recognising those differences and about it's about fairness. But when it comes to things like, uh, you know, women only changing rooms and toilets and refuges and prisons, then we're actually talking about safety, a much more important issue. And and this this uh, this guidance from the Equality and Human Rights Commission is going to be much castigated, but actually it's going to be welcomed by the vast vast majority of women and men, and I think also trans people. Yeah, and maybe you know there is always a third opportunity, isn't there? You know, if we're going to have a male and female toilet, then we can maybe we can have an intersex toilet, or we can have a mixed sex toilet. You know, there are ways we can do that. We don't have to just turn around and go, okay, we're just going to make the women's toilet. A mixed sex toilet. I put yeah. a tweet out yesterday which that was showed at, at some pub in Cardiff and they decided to take the women's toilet and decide to turn that into a mixed sex toilet. And the men's toilet was still a men's toilet. And you yeah. go, where are all the queues? The queues are at the women's toilet. So that makes no sense yeah. whatsever. Absolutely. No, so, you know, it, it's, we've got to start talking about this and come up with rational solutions that can accommodate everybody. But also, A, a it's common sense and B, it's majority opinion. And the majority of people in this country, I don't think, are remotely transphobic at all. I think people in this country yeah. are very welcoming. Uh, we're, we're, very, on, on, we're always told constantly what an awful, horrible country this is. It's discriminatory, whether it's uh, on race or, or, or gender or or, or, or trans or, or, or sexuality. And I just don't think that's what most people's experience is in this country. No, I agree with you. I think most people are very live and let live in this country, but they do believe in fairness. And that's what we've got a history of standing up for. And I think that they, you know, we, well, I mean, this, this legislation has been basically 
again, you know, exasperated in the press today, has been saying, look, these are the rules and they're being misinterpreted. Yeah. And that's what we have to pull back on is the fact that people are being allowed to misinterpret to governing bodies, to organisations, to retailers, that this is the law. And in fact, it's not the law in this country. Good talk. Hot talk. talk. Bold talk. Talk radio. Listen on your smart speaker. Watch it live on your smart TV. The world headquarters of common sense. Talk radio.